there's a company that's charging drones mid-air with lasers. No charging cord, no fuel, no power stations, yet they can stay in the clouds forever, harnessing the power of light. It's constant, it's invisible, and it's literally everywhere. And if they pull this off, it's not just drones, it could be literally everything. There's nothing stopping Lightway from essentially powering the entire world. It can be cars, cities, phones, power grids, all rebuilt under this idea that energy doesn't need wires anymore. And so we flew in to ask the big questions. Is this the beginning of a wireless energy revolution? And what's the science behind transferring energy with lasers? This is episode three of our original startup series, profiling the most prolific and innovative startups across Australia. Welcome to the frontier of wireless energy, featuring the story of Aquila powering the sky with lasers. And this series wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, Vanta, who are helping power Australian startups through their compliance. Why did you start Aquila? I think Aquila is such an interesting and strange company yep. and to think that a young early 20s person started it, it's quite interesting. I, I started Aquila because I wanted to make a difference ultimately. I always knew I was going to do something great. I felt that if it wasn't me, then it wouldn't get done. I have four brothers and I was like a more of a nerdy type. Spent a lot of time after school in the library just reading about space and sci-fi. I just came across this astronomy magazine. I saw a picture of, of Saturn and I thought, wow, there's, there's some really beautiful things out there in the universe. Imagine what it would be like if we could we could explore that, like the, the idea of, of humanity exploring the galaxy and sort of creating this, this scalable civilization. With curiosity across these new horizons, with a desire to go further and to explore what lies beyond. Creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever. If civilizations are common, or even slightly common, then there should be civilizations ahead of us because there's been so much time. But wouldn't you want to see what that's like? Yeah, I mean, we've been so around. compelling. And I just knew that the types of infrastructure you need to, to empower that would be essentially the types of infrastructure that we're building at Aquila, um, like a, a scalable kind of transmission network uh, composed of lasers and photovoltaics. And you've talked about the term the Internet of Energy. Can you go deeper into what you mean by it? The Internet was a, a system, a decentralized network that essentially uh, connected the entirety of the world's information together. The fact that we have communications following that pathway, but energy to an extent becoming even more localized, it just seems really bizarre and like not aligned with the trend of history more generally. The basic idea is, look, there's 10,000 times more renewable energy in the world than we need as a civilization right now. The number one determinant of, of quality of life is, is essentially energy access. Then something like Aquila Lightway, where like we can seamlessly shift energy around the world is like more necessary than ever. If this works for drones, what's next? Your car, your phone, all these other objects. A world where energy moves like data always on, always around us. When was the moment where you first realized that like wireless uh, flight charging was possible? Myself and my co-founder Nelson, I went over to New Zealand. We had like this eBay solar panel and we had like a, a laser pointer and we would sort of bounce it off a mirror and, and showed the voltage of the solar panel increased and that was really cool. And then over the next couple of months, I realized that there was nothing stopping you from transmitting power dynamically using light and that the the best application for that to start with was getting energy to somewhere where you can't get energy with a cord to. Um, so a drone flying is, is a great example of that. If we're able to charge things 24 seven um, wirelessly like drones, what is stopping us from charging things like phones, cars, planes in just the same, the same idea? Uh, nothing, it's, uh, it's just a matter of, of scale. A drone optical power product for supplying power to drones is a very high value per unit energy application. Cars and, and more scalable systems obviously need more power, uh, they're larger scale, and uh, the, the sort of value of that power is 
is lower um, compared to like the value of the power in the sky. So we, we do like to um, supply power to, uh, to sort of areas where the value of power is very high as a general kind of market strategy. Um, but there's nothing stopping Lightwave from essentially powering the entire world. No landing, no swap outs, just an autonomous drone receiving power midair. So what happens when drones can fly 24 seven? You don't just improve delivery, you redesign logistics, search and rescue, border control, farming, and so many other industries. Because when you remove energy as a constraint, you unlock a whole new category of autonomy. I feel like what I'm hearing is that there's much more of a master plan here than I first realized. Seeing the demos last week, it was all about sort of wirelessly charging drones. Yeah. Um, it seems like from what you're saying, you want to help create a spacefaring civilization. What, what would you describe the longer term vision as? You, you saw a lot in the weeds and uh, the, the longer term vision is an infinitely scalable energy network of light. Um, as you said, that's, that's a, a stepping stone towards like this galactic scale humanity. That's ultimately what we're working towards. Over time, we build towards this sort of network of satellites that can beam power around the world and shift renewable energy from like, you know, out back in Australia to power factories in Europe or peak out in New York City. That's all possible. But actually, if I'm, I'm going to be like even more, uh, I guess, transparent, it was this idea of like, okay, hey, um, there is so much energy in the universe. This is, this is kind of crazy, but like, Light propulsion is the most optimal way to, to ultimately send humanity across the galaxy. So like, how do we build up the infrastructure layer and scale it that sort of gets us towards the energy levels required to facilitate like interstellar um, exploration? So the thing we need to do is first retire the technical risk and then you know, get these products operating in the market and then sort of prove we can scale them and, and over time we, we unlock this, this uh, long-term vision. Every version got lighter, smarter and more stable until they reached a moment where the drones didn't just fly but it re literally refueled in the air. Who are the key customers right now using Aquila? And there's no customers using Aquila yet. We think the key customers are going to be in the fields of uh, security, particularly base security and border security where you need a drone flying 24-7 to provide continuous surveillance of, uh, of bases and, and borders and that's what we're designing our first products to to address drone operation drone strikes stunning and complex drone attack the dark side of drone technologies very real killer robots autonomous combat drones but innovation like this doesn't just take flight it actually collides with the real world. Precision alignment, public safety, regulations, weather, there's all these factors. So scaling this isn't just about engineering, it's about diplomacy. So I can imagine governments around the world using this technology for like, you know, bad causes that we can, it doesn't take much imagination to think of, to yeah. power, you know, offensive weapon systems against civilians. What do you think is going to happen in that space with governments eventually creating their own version of this technology? Governments are already pursuing this technology. For us at Aquila, our, our mission and our vision is to empower the future of humanity as a whole. We don't deploy for directly destructive purposes. Energy is inherently destructive uh, and as soon as you get to a certain scale of energy delivery, like that can inflict massive damage. So. I was always looking very far into the future and, and saying, look, um, we want to set the right foundations now such that when the lightweight networks are deployed at scale, uh, they won't be abused for these, these purposes we don't want them to be um, used for. Whether you're starting and scaling your company's security programs, demonstrating top-notch security practices and establishing trust is now more important than ever. Vanta automates compliance for global frameworks like ISO 27001 and SOC 2 and the latest Australian frameworks like CPS 234 and Essential 8, saving you time and money while helping you build trust with your customers. Over 8,000 global companies like Atlassian, FireAnt, Handle, and Tactic.io use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Our audience gets a special offer of $1,000 off Vanta at vanta.com.au slash Sachin and Adam.
So one of the lasers have to be 300 metres long. Like, is that how far away a drone is potentially going to be? Yeah, 300 metres is kind of the distance we've determined when speaking to our customers, where that, like, product market fit becomes really useful. So the pain point for a lot of the people that um, are using these drones is that they want to use them for surveillance or surveying, especially of a smaller location. And so if you had, like, a defence base, for example, perfect example, you could just have your drone in the air 24 seven. And it's a dynamic, essentially, like surveillance cam that can go check things out and doesn't put anybody in danger. Um, equally, we talk a lot to surf lifesavers in New Zealand and Australia, and you can often see that they have their sort of drones set up on the, on the shore, on the coastline. And um, they essentially send the drones up in order to look at rips and identify sharks, most of it. And it's kind of a very essential time when you find a shark where you don't want to actually have your battery run out. So in here is kind of the entryway. It's where we keep all of our testing stuff. It's not that interesting, but this whole big space along here is essentially our laser lab. So it's 26 meters long. And once you guys get inside it later, you'll see it's got 18 different bounce, um, for, bounces for the laser. So it's got 18 different mirrors that are really highly specialized and their, their reflectivity rate is like 99.999% so that we can shoot our laser and replicate 300 meters in this 26 meter space. And so wow. these are actually made from like double layered fireproof gyp rock. And there are a couple of burn marks on the inside, if you're gonna be honest, so yeah. Have you ever been burned by a laser? I have never been burned by a laser. Our lasers are pretty high powered, so. Yeah, I think it could be more than a burn if you jumped in front of it. Um, we're very, very careful when it comes to our safety systems and all the rest of it. And at this point, we really wanted to see the system live. And so we actually got to step inside the Aquila tunnel. This is where Aquila learns to charge machines with laser light beams. Our ordinary Sony cameras actually couldn't detect the laser, so we needed to use a special infrared device. Watch closely. This one laser is about to travel 400 meters by reflecting across a maze of mirrors all reflected inside Aquila's tunnel. So next I will show you guys our laser lab. So we custom designed this, there's nothing like it anywhere. Um, it's double gyp prop fireproof and it's where we have all of our high powered lasers. So it's very safe. Come on in, come on in. Um, these curtains are essentially laser curtains. Hi, hey. True. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. So in here is where we test the sunflower in and of itself. So right now what we actually have set up for you guys is something that's very cool, which is essentially our, our most exciting test rig that we have at Hall of Aquila because it's what we call our laser maze. And we like to joke that it's where we leave our valuables so that nobody can access it like in Von Villain stuff. But actually we're very safe and we never leave it on unless somebody's looking after it. So the way, if you come in and look, you can- This is really cool. This reminds me of a rifle range. So, Adam and Reception, you guys get in here. You use this, this is an IR viewer, and you'll be able to see the wavelength that we're using. Ooh. If you don't see that very clear, we probably can. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I see it. We can uh, adjust. The Damn. Well. It's yeah. good there. Yeah. Wow, sparkly, <laughs> sparkly beam. Yeah. Wow, I see them bouncing off each other. It just looks like lots of sparkles, really. So, that's dust. Dust in, a, in this room. You oh, that's dust. Yeah. So, are you, are you looking? Run, they get burned right now when it's on. It's on very low power right now. So. Yeah. Wow. So, if there wasn't dust, you'd, you wouldn't be able to see it, right? Yeah, if, if there's no dust, you can't see the beam. Mm. Right. How fast is that beam moving? Fast, the, the beam moving is the same as speed. Wow. Of light. Okay, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> How fast is the speed of light again? Uh, roughly three times 10 power of eight. It's a lot of zeros. Ruby, I'm looking at the lasers right now. So you're telling me that these lasers could lock onto a drone? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that we set it up is that we have that buffer beam. That's what does the locking and the visual system does the locking. This beam is the power beam. So yeah. that's like the sun, like yeah. you were referring to before. It's the bit that goes all the way in the middle. It's encompassed all the way through the air. It goes through the atmosphere. It has quite low absorption losses through the atmosphere because there's gases in the atmosphere and it essentially gets caught by what we call our receiver on the other side. Yep. And that's made up of something very similar to solar panels, but really specialized for this wavelength. At the transmitter, 
we've got it plugged into the wall, uh, electricity comes out and we convert that using semiconductor lasers into light and we project it through this collimated optical setup which is able to shape and project the beam over distance um, by reflecting uh, between mirrors we're able to really simulate that propagation and, and look at how um, how we can transmit power over over long distances. How far can a drone fly using the lightweight products? We have 400 meters of range so a drone can fly indefinitely within that range. Uh, by creating a network of, of transmitted devices, a drone can uh, can fly effectively as, as, as far as you need it to, um, as long as you have coverage within that sort of linear area. What are the key bottlenecks to scale here? So if you want to power drones mm -hmm. up to four kilometers and then 40 kilometers and then power planes, what, what are the inputs there that you need to get right? Think of it in terms of like technical risk and operational risk. So technical risk is essentially, can you transmit power? Can you do it safely? Uh, can you do it in a way that you can deploy into the market? And then the operational risk is like, can you actually have these products operating in the market? There's a lot of radiation that you're, uh, you're sort of shooting into the airspace and there's um, regulations that you need to adhere to. So it's like, how do we design the network and the operating systems and the, the regulations in such a way that we can actually operate these networks at scale? That's a problem that you can't throw more money at. And what do you think the hardest thing is about running a deep tech company? It's just a, it's a really long, it's a really long journey. Um, and you know, there, with, with a typical company, there's, there's uh, not much technical risk. There's maybe a little bit of market risk. There's, it's just a lot simpler. Whereas like with Aquila, there's technical risk, there's regulatory risk, um, operational risk, there's like, we don't fundraise, then we, you know, we can't keep going. Um, there's that kind of risk, uh, and it's all kind of <laughs> in, like in the one company. Um, I just think it's it's yeah, it's it's a crazy thing to to be doing. If we give you time to like really really dream, what do you think the boldest version of Aquila looks like ten years into the future? In the future, I believe that we can we can design systems that can shift renewable energy from wherever it is to wherever it's needed. I believe that we have more than enough energy in the world to have abundance. So drones are low speed power and distance, higher fast electric aircraft are higher speed power and distance, and satellites are higher still, but like over time, if we gain the capability to, to transmit optical energy through like a lot of speed power and distance, then we can build up this capability to do optical energy networking and then sort of shifting energy around the planet and like we can then sort of scale that because it's it's like a huge market and uh, and eventually unlock the energy scales required to facilitate uh, exploration throughout the, the galaxy. We went to Aquila to see their laser charging technology. But what we found was something much, much bigger. Today, energy is slow and frigid. Coal, natural gas, oil will move on ships across the world and power will be transmitted through fiber optic cables beneath the ocean. But what if power could move like data across cities, across countries, and maybe even one day across planets? And that's what Aquila is really building, an energy network powered by lasers. Wireless, global, and scalable. It may sound crazy, but this is potentially how we power an interstellar civilization. If you're still watching, thank you for taking the time. Truthfully, it's your support that helps us fuel this mission to make bigger and better documentaries for you to all enjoy. And to say thank you, once we reach 15,000 subscribers, we're going to host a tech summit in Australia with some of the top founders here. We're currently at 4,000 subs, but growing quick. But if you help us grow, uh, you might be able to come to the summit. It's going to be a lot of fun.